Growing an exotic style, tropical or jungle themed garden in countries that experience colder winters is often about creating the effect, the illusion of the tropics. And that can mean a wide variety of plants from all around the world. Some of which are perfectly tough and hardy in our winters, others need a bit of TLC when things do turn colder. And some at the other end of the scale are essentially house plants that need to be brought inside for about half the year. So your tropical style garden can be as high or low maintenance as you want it to be. And in today's video, as we're now rapidly approaching late October, I want to talk as the nights get colder and the days get shorter about overwintering. A simple question, when do I start looking at winter care from my exotic plants? Now, obviously, there's not a definite answer. It's not the 23rd of October or the third week in November after a full moon or anything like that. The answer depends entirely on where you are, what you grow and what the weather's like. So I want to talk more about the factors that influence my decision and explain my process as simply as I can. And hopefully it helps you guys out with your gardens. But as always, if there's anything else you want to know, drop me a comment in the YouTube section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So let's get started with the factors influence when. Firstly though, back to basics. Obviously it's important to be prepared and you don't want your plants outside when it's frosty or freezing or the sort of conditions that might affect that particular plant. So you definitely want to plan ahead, but equally you don't want to chop down, store away or wrap up your plants for longer than you need to. That's probably the most crucial thing about overwintering. You really want to minimize the amount of time you spend keeping your plants wrapped up or inside in suboptimal conditions. And that's purely because like now we're late October, but the weather's still relatively mild. We narrowly missed having our first frost here around three weeks ago. And at the minute, looking in the weather forecast for the next two weeks, there's nothing approaching a frost forecast. So that means whilst it might be rainy now, thankfully, and it might be getting colder, the plants are still steadily growing outside. And if a plant's growing, it's not declining. So it really is important Hopefully here, I might be getting another few weeks pushing into November before I start bringing things inside. Now, certain plants like Musa Baju, the hardy fiber banana, they are tolerant of being wrapped up for months on end, but other plants only need wrapping or bringing inside for the absolute minimum time possible. And that's because when it comes to plants like the Insetti ventricosa moreliae, these are generally dry stored. And if you're dry storing a plant, it's only gonna last a finite amount of time that plant will shrink down, it's using its reserves, it won't last forever. So it's important if you can to make that a three to four month thing rather than a whole six month event. And likewise, when it comes to plants that do stay outside, like more borderline palms, tree ferns, they won't like being wrapped up for half the year. And you only want to wrap those up when the exact time it's required, when it's sub-zero, when it's really, really cold, when there's maybe a week below freezing, that's when it's really important. But as things get milder, you take it all off again and you let that plant breathe in the milder air, they will appreciate it. I think there's probably four main factors that influence when you should start the overwintering process. And the first of those is just simply what you're growing. Now, it might sound obvious, but I know over the course of a long summer like this one, it's very easy to buy extra bedding plants, put those in your garden, try a few different house plants, maybe impulse buy a few certain collocasias or something like that, plant them out and kind of forget about them by October. So I think probably the first really easy but crucial thing is to have a walk around your garden, just remind yourself exactly what you're growing. Now, I know a lot of you who are perhaps newer to the hobby, you might not be familiar with all the plants, so there's nothing wrong with just Googling the plants, finding out if they are hardy, if they are more of a tender plant. And usually the RHS website has a conservative but still informative guideline to what kind of temperatures each plant can take. So that's probably the first step, just making sure you're aware of what plants you grow. Because if your garden is mainly full of hardy exotics like bamboos and tough trachycarpus palms, for you overwintering probably isn't a thing. If you grow a few more borderline plants, like tree ferns, then you might just need to know when to overwinter and give those plants a little bit of care. I've done a full video on that exact subject if you're interested. And at the other end of the scale, if your garden's packed full of big leaves and tender plants, then definitely you need to be a bit more prepared, but it's entirely your own fault. So that's definitely the first thought that goes into when to overwinter. The second factor then, it's location. You might not be a massive weather geek and know when the first frost usually come for your area, but believe me, if you keep growing these tropical style plants, you will become one, it's a definite. 
Basically, where you live in the country dramatically affects when you need to start overwintering and what you need to do with your plants. So if you live on the south coast or more of a sheltered city location, you can get away without doing things for a lot longer. Some plants might not even need wrapping. If you live colder, maybe a more inland location, you might have seen frosts already. And if you live in a more northerly or Scottish location, you might have had several frosts and have already brought your tender plants inside. So realistically, I think probably best case scenario for getting everything ready is the back end of November. Worst case will probably be the back end of September. And where you live in the country pretty much decides where you fall on that sort of list. So I think really as a practical step, rather than just following what a TV show, magazine, website, or some over the top YouTuber told you to do, really factor in where you live. Find out what people do near you. Personally, I join one of the tropical style Facebook groups find out what experienced people are doing in locations similar to yourself. And that way you're doing things at the optimum time for your garden and your plants, rather than digging things up unnecessarily or having plants fill in your kitchen for six months long, the inevitable divorce, mess and everything that follows. You really want to do things that are right for your location and get away with as little as possible. Following on from that point, I think it's important to take into account what the weather's actually doing this year and what it's likely to do over the next couple of weeks. It's easy to say things aren't accurate, but chances are if you download some kind of weather forecasting app, I just use the BBC one, it will give you a rough idea of when it's likely to be frosty. If the temperatures are much less than five degrees, there could be a frost and it changes every single year. So rather than just having an arbitrary date, wrapping everything up, bringing everything inside the same day every year, in the spirit of trying to get away with things outside for as long as you possibly can, just keep a rough eye on the weather. Last year, I didn't bring anything in until around the third week of November. So it really does fluctuate every year. And that can have a massive difference on how well your plants overwinter. Because if you're only keeping that plant inside for four months, that plant has got a much higher chance of success than one that's been inside for six months plus. So just really keep an eye on the forecasts learn when the first frost might be coming up for your area and plan accordingly. Yes, it can be a bit of an educated risk or gamble, however you want to see it. But if there's a chance you can have your plants out for an extra few weeks and push things into November, you should absolutely do it. It really does make a huge difference to the chances of those plants coming through winter. The fourth factor then, very important, but also a little bit contradictory, it's the U factor. And what I mean by that is, well, in some of the Facebook groups, Again, a bit of a generalization, but you have two different kinds of people. The newer people of the hobby that want to do everything they can to protect the precious new plants. They want to wrap them up and bring them inside way too early. And then you've got the more experienced people who leave things months and months later and maybe don't even protect certain plants. I think the reality is the only thing that makes those people more confident is A, the fact they've actually got away with stuff in previous years, so experience. B, they're more prepared, have the materials and know the methods they're gonna use. And C, they're more willing to take an educated risk. And I think really where you fit on that sort of sliding scale depends on the time you have available. If you're someone who works long days like myself, then very soon we won't be able to do anything in the evenings. The daylight will be gone. So if there's a relatively good weekend in October, if it's not raining, then it's probably best to make the most of that weekend and get all your preparations done. Because yes, I know it goes against what I said. Yes, it's important to minimize the overwintering time, but if there's a good weekend that works well for you, plants aren't really gonna grow much over the next few weeks anyway. So if that weekend is the best time for you to get things done, get it done then. If, on the other hand, you're someone who doesn't mind going out and taking those extra risks, and maybe on a frosty night, go outside with a head torch and some horticultural fleece and wrap a load of things up, then by all means, you push the boundaries. You really go for things as long as you possibly can. Last year, it was the snow that actually led to me bringing a few plants inside into the polytunnel. It's trial and error. You do the best you can for your plants, but make sure that's at the best time for you when you can practically do it. Even for me, that's quite a long intro, but I think the why is so much more important than just the when. Rather than blindly follow what I tell you to do, having the factors that can help you make a more informed decision can help you choose a date that works better for you, your garden and your plants. And I think it's more important than ever in this time of climate change and irregular seasons to not just be prepared for the real challenges that brings, but also be able to take advantage of the opportunities. And if that means 
autumn's pushing into November, maybe even December, then you've got to take advantage because the time that our tropical plants can really thrive outside it is precious and short. So you really need to make the most of that possible. And if I can keep my plants outside for another month, I certainly will be trying it. But when it comes to an actual concrete when, I wanted to break my plants down into three main groups and give you a ballpark idea as to when I bring them inside. First group of plants then, I would class as the tender plants. These can be really soft bedding plants like coleus, which are usually the first plants to show that they're not enjoying the colder temperatures, through to plants like inseti, which traditionally were thought of as very tender, but can actually take a good bit more cold than you might expect. The plants that come inside, I generally bring these plants in before the first proper frost. I often push things as long as possible. If you want a real sort of set metric, I would say when the nighttime temperatures get close to three or four degrees, it's time to bring these plants in. So if you see temperatures like that coming up for a few nights in a row, it's time the weekend before to get all the plants dug up and brought inside. This can range from some of the more tender succulents and cacti that you grow through to bigger leaf plants that you generally have to grow like house plants, the more tender colocasia, alocasia, through to banana plants like Musa Dwarf Cavendish. If you Google these plants, you'll often find that they're classed as tender and can't take less than 10 degrees. That's really not true. They can take significantly under those temperatures, but what they won't like is a frost or temperatures around five degrees, daytime temperatures only reaching 10 degrees for a few weeks on end. That's simply too much for them. So yes, you want to keep these plants outside as long as possible, but equally you want to bring them inside before the first real frost for your area. Now, what that means is generally speaking, anywhere from the end of September, if you live in a really cold area, through to realistically early November, maybe mid November, if the weather's kind and you live in a more sheltered climate. So that's the rough sort of range, but as a general rule, if a plant's tender, if it needs to come inside, yes, the insetia are a little bit tougher, but as a general rule, if you bring those plants inside before the first frost, anywhere in October, you should be fine. The second group of plants then, massive generalization, but trying to simplify things, are the plants that don't need to come inside for winter, but equally would prefer a bit of TLC or require it to get them through the colder months of the year, particularly if it's a cold winter or you live in a chillier part of the country. So I'm thinking plants that either need to be brought into a polyton or greenhouse or wrapped up in situ, but once they're done, they're done. So plants like cannas, dahlias, salvias. In a lot of the country, they are perfectly hardy. In a modern, mild winter, perfectly hardy will come back not a problem at all. But if you live in a colder area, or you want to be on the safe side, then I generally dig those up before the first real freeze, before the first hard frost. I don't mind them getting a little bit blackened by the frost, the foliage can take a bit, because the tuber, rhizome, or the part of the plant that's under the ground, that can take far more. So I let them get blackened a little bit, but then generally speaking, at some point in November, I make the decision to dig them up, bring them into the polytunnel, wrap them up, do what I'm doing with them. Musa Baju, it's another plant that I know some of you won't even protect it, you'll say it doesn't need it, but if you live in a colder area, if there is a colder winter, or you just want to keep the height of the shooter stem, then you almost certainly do need to wrap them up to allow that. And what you do is essentially just wrap the whole thing up. Like I said, I'll be doing a video about it, but put four canes in, put fleece around it, fill it with straw, something waterproof on top. When do I do that? I'm not worried about frost, but before it starts to get actually freezing, I would wrap it up. So again, maybe some point in November. That's when I do the plants that need some kind of preparation and that's it, they're done. So as a general rule, October for the tender house plants, here, that is anyway, November for the plants that need wrapping up or bringing to polytunnel. But what do you do then about the third group of plants? The plants that do live outside, the plants are relatively hardy, but might suffer during the coldest spells. As I said all the way through this video, there's a lot of factors that go into it. 
And I personally will be chanting a lot of my house plants, a lot of the plants that do need digging up and bringing into the polytunnel for at least another few weeks. And my actual goal is to actually bring them all in at the same time. That makes things so much easier. You're only getting muddy once, digging up a border once. That's generally what I tried to do. And last year, it was around mid-November when I actually did that. But in a video like this, I generally try to give advice that fits most people across most of the country whilst explaining the reasons behind it. But the third group of plants, the plants that need sort of reactive wrapping, if you like, plants like the tree ferns, maybe feather palms that aren't in completely hardy where you are, these plants, you don't want to wrap them up according to a schedule. You essentially only want to wrap them up for the duration of the cold. And when it comes to tree ferns, I've done a full video all about winter care for these. I'll link to it in the description below. And that video goes into more detail than I can in this one. But essentially, once you put the straw in the crown to actually protect the most tender part of the plant, I would only wrap that plant when there's a real freeze, when temperatures are likely to be sub-zero for multiple days, when it actually requires wrapping. A lot of plants like this, or some of the palms especially, they don't appreciate being wrapped for months on end. So that's the main reason why we don't just be really cautious, wrap them up in November and leave them that way till March. You want them to get as much of the fresh air, much of the airflow as possible to prevent rot, or in the case of tree ferns, the other way around, to prevent them drying out over winter. So the reactive plants, the plants that you might read about that need a little bit of care when things do get cold, only give them it when they really need it. Roughly speaking, that's how I see the garden. You've got the decorative plants that make up a border. The plants that come outside for summer, and those, the ones that were last to be brought out, are the first ones to come in. The second group of plants are the ones that you know are gonna need some element of TLC. And those, it's a case of trying to get away with things for as long as you possibly can. But ultimately, some point in late October or mid to late November, you've got to make that decision, get them wrapped up, bring them to polytunnel. Once it's done, it's done before any serious cold happens. And the third group are the plants that you generally speaking want to get away with without any kind of winter care. But if the temperatures do get cold, you're prepared for it. You've got some fleece on hand, you know what you're going to do, and you're prepared to do it for the shortest amount of time possible. So hopefully that covers most things when I do things here. Ultimately, my goal every year is to basically have one day in November and just let you go around, smash everything in, get it brought inside, job done. I hope this video has helped, but if you've got any more questions, leave me a comment below and I'll try to come back with an informed response based on where you are and what I do myself. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.